What's up guys? It is December now. Time for holiday cheer and, and Christmas joy. But I have to backtrack and talk about something that happened in October. And that is the, uh, well first of all, welcome to the Stuck Movie Watching Vlogs. If you're a subscriber, you know what this is. But if you're somebody who just stumbled upon this, this is a segment where I read off a list of films that I've seen in the previous month and I give a quick review. Only this time, uh, I had to backtrack two months ago because I never did one for October. And I was going to do a combination of October and November, uh, but uh, November was a big month. I watched a lot of stuff that on that month. October is a light month. I watched more TV shows like Breaking Bad and I caught up with The Walking Dead and all kinds of other stuff uh, instead of watching so many movies. But, uh, so, so, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm here to do October. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, starting with October 3rd. The first movie I saw in October uh, it's it's one of DC's animated straight to DVD films, which are all amazing films, um, and that is uh, Justice League: The Flashpoint Paradox. Uh, it came out this year. It's about the Flash who finds himself in an alternate universe where all the um, the DC characters that we know and love are completely different. They are, uh, you know, they're at war with each other, and the end of the world is on the horizon. Truly just an awesome, remarkable animated movie. Wonderful, brilliant animation, very violent, tons of action, very great storytelling, great voice work. I truly, truly enjoyed this film, and it's definitely it's something I want to get, I want to own, but uh, I had a a ball watching it um just it's so intense sometimes these uh, animated films from dc are a little more intense than the actual theatrical films but awesome great stuff um i'm gonna go ahead and give my ratings out on this uh video uh that i give a four out of five really great stuff um as always, though, if you don't want to hear me talk and ramble about all these movies, the list of all the films that I saw in October are down below. You can look at them. The ratings are there. But, uh, you know, stick with me and, you know, you, you can hear my thoughts, you know, if you care, too. All right, so the next day. Uh, first of all, the movie Gravity came out theatrically in October. And, um... Of course I was interested in seeing it, but more so, I, I really wanted to relive Alfonso Cuaron's classic. I mean, it's not an old movie, but it's a classic in my opinion. And that is Children of Men. Yes, you're not, you're not tripping. This is an HD DVD. And it still works. It still looks great. It still sounds great. So that's why I use it. I mean, if you've seen this film, you know already what a spectacular film it is with its continuous uh, shots that it has, the, the, the art direction, just a really awesome, uh, grim, but amazing film. Um, and if you have not seen Children of Men, I implore you to please watch it. It is such a fascinating film, and... Uh, I'm not going to say it's underrated because most film buffs appreciate the shit out of it, and they should. Because to me, in my opinion, this is this is definitely one of the best science fiction films I've ever seen. It's definitely the best sci-fi film to come out in my lifetime. So with that said, of course I give it a 5 out of 5. Watching it again was truly remarkable, and... My 16-year-old uh, niece who loves science fiction, loves alternate realities, she loved it. This is a powerful film. Definitely something that I think we all should watch over and over again. Uh, the next movie I saw, which was on the 5th, I, I don't know why I'm saying the dates, but uh, I saw The Internship. That's the, the Google movie with um, Owen Wilson and uh, Vince Vaughn. Which, which is ironic, because I'm not really that big of a fan of either of them. 
And I actually do believe, I actually do believe, and yes, I do have the movie, but I do believe The Wedding Crashers is overrated. But, whatever, these guys seem to love each other, they work together a lot, and, and as far as this movie goes, it was alright, I, I really didn't expect to like it at all. It was okay, completely cliche, and, and, and it follows a certain formula that's been done to death, but, you know, it's enjoyable enough, and I actually saw the unrated version. Um, I didn't realize I saw the unrated version, but it was the unrated version, because they definitely used the F word a lot more than any PG-13 movie would allow, plus there was a lot of nudity, and uh, I'm glad I saw that version. I think, t I I don't know, I, I haven't seen the PG-13 version, I don't want to, but I would imagine that with all the F-words, it's definitely an improvement. It's it's an okay movie, I gave it 2.5, didn't mind it, but not something I would want to, you know, watch again. Not really that funny, to be quite honest. Um, in fact, there's a scene where uh, they're trying to work out this uh, scientific um, theory or... or problem, and Owen and, and Vince are talking and talking and talking like they're normally doing this one chick, shuts them up and says, guys, you guys are saying a bunch of stuff, and it really means nothing. It's like, you just summed up their career. There you go. The same day, uh, I saw a movie called The Woman. Um, it's from 2011. It's a horror film, it's a drama, it's, it's a really twisted movie. It's about a sadistic lawyer who, while out in the wilderness, finds a wild woman, a woman who lives in the wilderness, lives like an animal, and uh, he kidnaps her and tries to civilize her. Very twisted stuff. The, the final act is very gruesome and very wild as hell. It's a really cool movie, pretty low budget, there are no known stars in it, but it's definitely something that if you're into twisted horror, definitely check it out. It's, uh, it was good, it was actually pretty good, and I'll give that a 3.5. Alright, so the next day I saw a movie called Killing Season. Killing Season... Oh, oh, that's with um, John Travolta as as a Serbian, of all things, and uh, Robert De Niro. And what it is, is, let's just say that they were both involved in a war, they were on different sides, and uh, Travolta's character is looking for revenge, and he, th he thinks that his revenge will be fulfilled if he hunts and kills Robert De Niro's character. Very standard movie, very average in fact. But yeah, at the same time I liked it. And I think I only liked it because I really liked both actors. And I, both, I think they both did decent jobs. I think Travolta did a better job. I think, of course, De Niro, like usual, phoned it in. But uh, overall, it was, a, it was kind of intense, kind of violent. Uh, not memorable, to be honest. I, I, I'm having a hard time remembering specifics about that movie. But, uh, I was kind to it. It, it didn't... It had a limited theatrical release, release, but it went mostly straight to DVD. I'll give it a three. It's all right. So on the 11th, that's, that's a big gap from the 6th to the 11th, that's when I finally saw Gravity. I think I saw it like a week late. And I saw it in 3D. 3D was cool, not gonna lie. Uh, but like any 3D movie I see, I can only, I can always imagine watching it without the 3D and thinking I'm gonna enjoy it just as much. So 3D really doesn't mean shit to me. Gravity on the other hand, the movie Gravity. Okay, so... I'm gonna be honest, I was never really excited about the movie. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna be that great, and then all this acclaim came in, and people loved it. So I went in already thinking, oh crap, this movie's gonna be overhyped for me. Not the case, totally not the case. I actually loved it. Now, 
is a simple story, is a, you know, cliche, if you will. Okay, maybe. And, you know, the scientists that have debunked it can kiss my ass. I don't care if it's scientifically uh, accurate or, or not. I'm not a scientist, and I'm not sitting there thinking, oh, well, the physics of that are incorrect. I, I don't care. I just wanted to enjoy a movie, and I loved it. I, I actually liked uh, Sandra Bullock's character and George Clooney's character, and I thought it was a really great film. I, I The visuals, of course, are amazing, and I definitely identi identified with the themes in the movie. So, 4.5 out of 5, definitely one of the best films of the year. Uh, on the same day, I remember I rented this through Netflix, I saw Now You See Me. That movie, of course, came out earlier in the year, and it's about the, you know, the magicians that are able to uh, rob banks or so forth. So it's a magician movie and a heist movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I loved the cast. Um, I thought... Uh, I thought, yeah, everyone in the cast did a terrific job. Um, very, 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 you know, it's not a movie that has a bunch of special effects, but it, it just has a very interesting visual look to it. Now, a lot of people bitch and, and complain about the ending. I'm not going to say that the ending was great. I just didn't really care. I, it, it wasn't something that let me down. I So I really don't know why people hate the ending. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, I really, I, I, I can understand certain things, but in, overall, I was entertained by the movie, and when the ending came, I was expecting something to be a complete letdown, and I wasn't completely let down, so, you know, I liked it, I give it a 3.5, very solid movie in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, where, where is I? Where, where is I? Okay, on the 12th, um, I went to go see Machete Kills. Machete Kills. Wow. Okay, so I love the first film. So great, so over the top, so gleefully violent. And the second film, I had a ball with it. I had so much fun with it, but at the same time, I was a little let down because the first film was just so much sharper and so much more clever. Um, the second film is just completely nuts, and I think it goes beyond being a grindhouse film. It, it does kind of go out of its way to be a shitty film, but um, I still loved it. I, not loved it. I really liked it. I just I, I had a great time with it. Um, the whole, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to say, I don't want to spoil it at all if you want to see it. I mean, only a hundred people saw it in theaters, but I enjoyed it. I actually wrote a spoiler review for it on readerfilm.com if you want to check that out, uh, if you've seen the movie, of course. But, um, yeah, I give it a 3.5. Highly enjoyed it in a very disturbing way. Alright, speaking of disturbing, um, on the 13th I saw Escape from Tomorrow. Now, if you're not aware of that, you should be aware, if you're online a lot, you should know what this is. This movie um, which premiered at Sundance. This is all about the movie. This is the movie that was filmed in uh, Disney World and some parts in Disneyland. This is where some, you know, a group of people shot footage in, within the, the Disney parameters, but without their permission, and they made a movie out of it. Um, now, the concept is awesome, and this, what they did, and how they filmed it, is a grand story. I mean, if you can uh, find the interview with the director and the and the star, they tell a good story on how the movie was made. Unfortunately, the concept and the story is a lot better than the actual movie. The movie is very obscure and very kind of confusing, kind of uh, underwhelming. But I don't know. I, at the same time, I commend it. I dig it. There are certain elements of it that I really liked. 
Um, definitely a great, you know, the, the, the angles that they got in the movie are really impressive because it's shot gorilla style, but they're, they're able to get so many different angles, and I like that. So, I give it a 3 out of 5. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the movie. I haven't really thought about the movie since I've seen it. Um, but definitely something that deserves a little bit of admiration just on the way that they did it. Okay, so, um, this is funny because I didn't plan it this way, but if you look at the list, I have Escape from Tomorrow, and the very next day also has Escape in the title, and that's Escape Plan. That, uh, of course, is the action thriller with Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Came out earlier this year, well, not earlier, recently, uh, in October, in fact. Um, and, in fact, I saw... Uh, I saw a free screening of it. <clears throat> um, I personally liked the movie. Um, is it a great movie? No. Is it as smart as it wants to be? <laughs> Hell no. Um, and are uh, Stallone and Schwarzenegger old as hell? Hell yes. Um, it, it kind of sucks seeing them work together when they're old and, you know, falling apart. But it's still fun to see them work together. What works the most is their banter uh, with one another. And um, I still enjoy, I like the movie. I really enjoyed it. I like Jim Caviezel as the villain. Um, I like the action in the film. I like the suspense. Again, it's not as smart as it wants to be, but it is very entertaining in my opinion. So I give it a 3.5. Now, this movie... This next movie, uh, which, uh, which I was fortunate enough to see like two weeks early, um, actually I saw it a few days early, it was released in very limited uh, theaters, and then it slowly expanded. I'm talking about Escape, what the fuck, I'm talking about, I'm talking about 12 Years a Slave. I feel really stupid, because I should have reviewed this movie on its own. And maybe I will, so I'm going to keep this part short. Um, I really should review it because for one particular reason, and I'll get to that in a minute, but the movie itself is just completely awesome. I'm not saying it's entertaining and, and, and like a grand old time. It's not. It is a movie that will punch you in the heart, slap you in the face, and really just make you grateful for what you have. Because this movie is sad. But it is so, so wonderful and and powerful. You know, people want to call this movie Oscar great. Well, this is some good great. I think it, it, it should be an Oscar winner. Great, great film. Great, 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 great film. And the reason why I should review this on its own, finally, there is a 2013 film that I can honestly give a 5 out of 5 too. That's why I give it a 5 out of 5. Now, now that you know that, you may not want to see my full re review when I get to it. I hope you will, though. Then again, I hope I make it. So, alright, we're almost done. Uh, on the 19th, I saw Carrie, the remake. Look, the original film is cool. I like the original film. I never was a huge fan of it, but I definitely like it. I respect it as a classic. Uh, the remake is actually entertaining. I'm not even going to lie. I thought it was okay. Now, was it necessary? Absolutely not. Um, is it better than the first? Hell fucking no. But is the acting good? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Chloe... Uh, Chloe Grace Moretz did a wonderful job. Um, Julia Moore is awesome as the fat shit crazy mother. And I actually like Judy Greer. Nobody ever mentions her. She's, uh, she's the, uh, the, the gym teacher who tries to, you know, protect Carrie, tries to help her out. And I liked her. I liked her character. But the movie itself... It's entertaining, it's just not really that great. It's just kind of a meh overall. CG, too much CG. Uh, 
really, I really try not to compare it to the original, but you can't help it. And compared to the original, the original is a lot more shocking, and it just it, it's it's just more disturbing. This is just kind of kind of colorful, to be honest. But it's, I like it. I give it a three. I give it a three, um, and that's it. I'm just gonna move on now. All right, um. Now we're getting into a little bit of horror, you know, Halloween is in October, you know, you want to see a little bit of horror, I mean, you should watch horror every year, I mean, every, every chance you get, but when it's Halloween, I gotta watch a little bit of horror, and I actually saw a documentary, um, about horror films, it's called, long ass title, Night, okay, it's, uh, Nightmares, <clears throat> Nightmares in Red, White, and Blue, The Evolution of the American Horror Film. Now, if you have not seen that documentary, I saw it on Netflix, but I think they took, they removed it. Eventually, I think, I think they'll put it back. Um, really interesting documentary. Like, it, it really, it covers from the very first horror movie ever made to the, you know, the, the culture now, you know, just how it's evolved, I mean... It's a fascinating documentary. The narrator is great. It's, it's Lance Harrison from Pumpkinhead and Aliens. Uh, very fascinating, <clears throat> fascinating documentary. Shows a lot of gruesome images. Uh, and it's uh, awesome. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Alright, so on the 26th, I really didn't watch that many movies that I own. But, um, I did watch one that I bought a few months ago for five bucks on Blu-ray, and that's 1408. Now, the funny thing is when I bought this movie, I was hesitant. I saw it in the movie theaters when it came out, and I really liked it. But I'm like, do I want to buy this? And I'm going to watch it again? Five fucking bucks. I don't know why I even debated it with myself. I, you know, watching this again, if you don't remember, this is the one about the haunted, um hotel room with uh, John Cusack and Sam Jackson. This is a very underrated movie. It's really good. It's it's PG-13. There's no gore. There's no, like, actual violence. It's just a really suspenseful film. And Mr. Cusack, he carries this entire film, film on his own. So it, I was surprised. I mean, this is a, a solid horror movie. And, uh... What am I looking at? Oh, I'm not looking at anything. Uh, if you haven't seen this in a while, or, or if you've never seen it, or if you haven't seen it in a while, watch it for the first time, or watch it again, whatever. This is cool. This is a good film. Good visuals and everything. I'll give it a four. Uh, the next movie I saw, I own, and I saw it because it was in that documentary that briefly mentioned it, and it's the Hills Have Eyes Remake. One of the better remakes out there, one that I think surpasses the original, even though I like the original, um, is it a great movie? No, it's disturbing and, and sick as shit. I kind of felt dirty watching this movie, but it's, it's like that dirty, grimy horror movie that you just have to watch once in a while. The, the first hour drags as hell, it's, it's, it's slow, but when it really gets down to the nitty gritty graphic violence, it does it so well. There's so much grotesque shit in this film that it definitely deserves to, it deserves credit for being a, a, a good remake and a really solid horror film. And I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. Three more. The uh, the next movie I saw was on Netflix. It's called The Stuff. Kind of an 80s cult classic. It's from 1985. It has to do with a dessert that came from outer space. And people, they eat it and they can't get enough of it. And it's a really interesting movie because it takes a big jab at consumerism, uh, commercialism, corporate... Uh, America and all that shit. It's really interesting. It's a very campy and, and, and corny film, but it's cool. It's, it's actually enjoyable. I've never seen it. I've always heard about it. And, 
it's got some really awesome special effects. Of course, it's in the 80s, so it's all practical effects, and it's really quite awesome just for that. Uh, some very corny acting, really bad acting, actually. But overall, an interesting little horror movie, an interesting little campy classic. So I'll give it a 3 out of 5. The next movie I saw is called The Girl Next Door. Not the 2004 comedy about the porn star, which is a very underrated comedy, I might add. Uh, this is a 2007 film. It's a horror movie, but not in a, the slasher type of way. Just, it's the horror of humanity, basically. I watched the movie not knowing what it was. It's, it was one of those movies that... When you watch a, a, a movie on Netflix, there's always recommendations, and this thing always came up. I was like, okay, fuck it, I'm gonna watch it. I was not prepared to watch it. It's a very depressing and, and disturbing film. It's all about a an aunt who completely mistreats her niece, her niece uh, tortures her, lets other people torture her, it's a sick, sad movie, and it's based on a true story. It's loosely based on a true story. There's actually another film that I think captures the uh, the same story more authentically. I haven't seen it yet. It's called An American Crime with, um, I think, Stalker Channing, and it has Ellen Page. But anyway, this movie, very sad and depressing stuff. I felt so incredibly, incredibly bad for the girl. Really sad. The only thing is, this is one of those movies, I, I don't know how to rate it. I don't know how to really feel about it. It's it's like a Serbian film where I don't ever want to see it again. But, and, and it's sick and disturbing, but I cannot deny that there are some, some good qualities to it. At the same time, there's some bad qualities to this movie. Some of the acting is not that good. And it's almost kind of TV movie-like. But... I gotta give it a little bit of props. I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5. If you wanna see something really disturbing, then there's, there's a good movie to see. Uh, and the last movie, the last movie I saw, The Day Before Halloween, been wanting to see it for a long time. I could have seen it at South by Southwest, but I missed it. It was a midnight showing. I couldn't watch any midnight showings. VHS 2. I could have seen this movie a, lot, a long time ago, period. It's always been online. But, for some reason I never did. Finally, they added it to Netflix. I watched it, and I enjoyed it. Now, did I love it? No. Did I like it more than the first film? No. I think the first film is a lot more effective. I think the, the concept is better. In the, it's done better in the first film, because it was something a little, a little new. Found footage... Anthology, mixed in, that was the first time you've ever seen that, and, and, you know, plus, when I saw the first film, I had no idea what the hell it was about, nothing, until I saw it, and I was like, whoa, this movie, obviously, I knew what it, what it was going to partake in, and it's just overall, the, the, uh, this is the main story arc, which I don't like, and the four other segments, I like two of them. The other two, don't really care for them. You have to know which ones if you've seen the movie. The one with the eye, the mechanical eye, or, or the recording eye, didn't care for it. The the one about the, the zombie uh, segment, really liked that one. The the cult segment, which is directed by the guy who did the raid, uh, Garrett Ed Evans, I think it is. That was my favorite. That was incredible. The, the one about the, uh, the alien abduction. Didn't like it. Didn't really care. It was okay. It just... I think the cult one was better. That should have been the last one. Um, very gruesome. Very gory. And that's the problem, too. The first one wasn't really that gory. The second one is very gory. So they focused more on the gore aspect. But anyway, it, it was good. I liked it. Didn't love it. I'm, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Okay, that's it. Um, hopefully I didn't go on too long. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna warn you right now, if you're gonna watch November, which I will be making that video soon, 
that's a long month. It's gonna be a long video. So anyway, before I make this longer, thanks for watching or listening, because I always encourage you not to watch me for this um, this long amount of time. But anyway, thank you for supporting me. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think of any of these movies. If you want to start a discussion on any of them, let's do it. Yeah, I fucking conformed to this Google Plus bullshit. So now I, I can comment, and I will comment. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, have a good day, or good night, whenever you're watching this. Just, you know, stay cool. Alright, peace. What? Check it out.